today I'm going to talk about using bridge curve. I'm going to create uh, some surfaces through those bridge curves from the, these two patches to this edge. It's going to be a G3 continuity across these boundaries on these surfaces and a G0 up to this edge. Now, by nature, the surfaces themselves do not impose G3. So by using the bridge curve, I have the ability to impose G3 with the curves. Thus, once the boundary curves themselves have the correct constraint or have the correct type of uh, condition that I want running across those boundaries, then the surface itself will have that same mating condition across those boundaries. So for this, I'm going to set up a couple of datum planes. I'm going to come in, datum plane, all the way to this end. I'm going to throw another datum plane in, all the way to this end. Now that I have my datum planes, I'm going to go into curve. I'm going to create a couple of intersections. I'm going to intersect this and this through here. And I'm going to do the same thing, this and this through here. Now that I have that, I want to go ahead and create my bridge curve. So I'll go into bridge curve. I'm going to bridge from this curve to this curve. On the first curve, I'm going to reverse it. Now I, want to, I need to take this all the way back. You can see I have G3 at this end. I have my three lines. And over here is just simply G0. Um, I have just a simple circle around the ball. So now I have a G3 condition flowing in. I'll do the same thing at this end. Whoops. There we are. Yeah, I had to deselect and reselect. So there's my G3, there's my G0. I have my curves in place. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hide all of this extraneous geometry I no longer need. There we go. I'm going to go into my surface and I'm going to trim sheet. I'll just trim this up. It'll really help with visualization here in a minute. Okay, now that I have my sheets trimmed, I'm going to go ahead and run my surface through these four boundaries. Studio surface, section one, section two. Next, I'm going to go into my cross strings. Here's cross string one. And this is going to ask for some faces, so I want to make this tangent to those. And then the next thing I'm going to do is cross string two. It's going to be this edge. And you'll notice that this gets trimmed off automatically at these two points. I don't have to trim that edge back or extract a curve and trim things back. It just does it for me. I'm going to select OK. And I'm going to analyze this. So I'll go into my analysis, reflection, and have a look. And as you can see, I have a break across this boundary. Across this boundary is perfectly smooth, but over here it's broken. We don't like that. We don't want a broken boundary. So how do I fix that? Well, I'm going to go back into the studio surface. Within the confines of studio surface, I have various options. Let me go ahead and shrink this a little bit here, which allow me to change what's going on with that surface. So if I change this from, let's say, parameter to arc length, for instance, you'll notice that that washes out, but it changes the character of a surface significantly. Okay, the arc length is going to use a bit more tolerance. It's saying wash this boundary out and create one big surface going across. You can also, let me just select OK so you can, you can really see it. You can also, let me go back into the surface, let me double click on it, turn on what's called split output along boundary lines. So if I turn that on and select OK, what ends up happening is it puts that split back in there and it keeps it smooth. It changes the characteristics of the surface a little bit, but now 
you have a more accurate representation of what's going on across this boundary rather than just simply completely washing it out. If this is good enough for you, then you can go ahead and run some of the other analysis on this. So if I come in and let's say I wanted to run a section analysis across these surfaces, I can pick my surfaces, pick my curves, and as I see, there's my boundary. It comes in and it ramps. Not too bad a condition. It gets a little bit off, just a little bit, kind of a squiggle in, in, in the one area. Um, the rest of them aren't too bad. These are G2 with a little bit of, looks like a little bit of lead in. Now, if that's not good enough for you, let me go ahead and put this back into a standard shading. I can also come in here and analyze by surface continuity. So if I go into surface continuity here, and pick this edge to let's say this edge you can see that to a certain extent I have a little bit of G3 and that is located at those far ends across the center of it mathematically it may not be perfectly G3 if I look at G2 you'll see G2 is perfect and if I look at G1 and of course, G0, everything is going to line up. Turn on my G3, hit my apply. If I go across this boundary to this boundary, you can see that it is G3 in this direction. If I go from here to here, again, there's a little bit of G3, but not completely all the way across. If I visualize this again you'll see that I have a pretty good condition coming across these boundaries so even though mathematically this may not be perfectly G3 again mathematically it may visually look like it is G3 which in certain cases may be acceptable other things that I can do with the studio surface to try to clean this up a little bit is I may be able to come in here and do some of these rebuilds so if I wanted to do a degree intolerance, for instance, um, I know I have G3 across the one boundary. I may turn up my degree up to make sure I get my G3 going across the boundary. You can see here my G3 has improved. Okay. Over here at this end, it's perfect now, and this is, this is improved. This is eh, maybe not as good as I want it to be. I can go into guides and I can do the same thing. So by messing with your tolerance, rebuild tolerances, you have the ability to go in there and affect what's going on as far as how that surface is going across those boundaries. And again, you check your highlights. You gotta make sure that your highlights look good. And you can see that Highlight wise, G3 is there. It's not a not a sudden change in radius or curvature. So what's going on is mathematically, it's not coming up as G3, but geometrically, it's coming up as G3 because of these end curves. If I came in here now and modified this bridge curve, and I went to a curvature, just a simple curvature, and select OK, you can see I'm going to undo it and redo it. So you can see that there's a definite difference in what's going on with that curvature. If I did the same thing at this end, I'd end up with similar results. And another thing that you can do to help with the imposition of this is you can come in here and you have the ability to modify what this curve actually looks like. So if you want to give it a little bit more lead in, you can give it a little bit more lead in. And again, you can see here, there are differences because of that additional lead in that I've given it. And I can do the same thing with this curve up here. So there's my start point. Now you can see a 
a greater difference across those boundaries. But again, here I have a nice perfect condition because I turned on the arc length and I did split along or output along boundary curves. And then I started messing around with my degrees and tolerances and such. I also have additional tolerances down here that I can play with. If you want to, you can you can play with uh, the angular tolerance. You may be able to come up with, a, 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 again, change the shape. By reducing the tolerance, you, you're telling it to be a little closer to what you truly want. Now, if you go too high of a tolerance, you can lock up your machine or it just won't work or it'll just fail. So be careful when you're messing with these tolerances. You can probably, you can, you can wiggle your G1 tolerance down pretty low. The G0 positional tolerance, you may be able to cut this down a little bit as well. Uh, the G2 tolerance, you may be able to cut this down a little bit as well. Um, as you can see, cannot satisfy rebuild tolerance. So it issues a little warning and it tells me where the problem's at if it can't satisfy that tolerance. So, you know, it's up to you. I go up a little bit more and it can now rebuild it. You can see here, this is probably not the most desired shape. So you may have to go in there and play with these curves a little bit more. You may have to put in a third curve in this area as well. But uh, that's basically how you can get a G3 condition going across um, ad ad adjacent surfaces in a blended area.